So this should be a gospel that kind of shakes you up a little bit because it's like, wait, what did Jesus just say here? And many times this has been a misunderstood passage. A lot of times people will preach on it saying, well, Jesus sort of just had a bad day and he was just kind of a little snippy. He snapped and he had to apologize later. But if Jesus was acting that way, then he would have been sinning, which means that he couldn't have been the Savior, which means we're in a lot of trouble. So that's not the way of seeing this. There's something else below the surface. But let's see what's going on here. Let's just walk through this progression. And we'll just see how powerful this woman's faith is. And it just pierces the heart of Jesus and allows this ocean of loving mercy to pour forth. So first of all, she is a Canaanite woman. She's someone outside of the people of Israel. She's not part of the family of God, this chosen people. And this is the area of Tyre and Sidon. This is the same area where people like Jezebel came from. If you've ever noticed, most people are not called Jezebel nowadays because that is a, not a very nice term. She was a, a vicious queen. She was kind of the villain of villains. Worse than any Disney villain is Jezebel. And she's from this area. So this person is coming from this area that doesn't have a good track record, is outside of the covenant. And yet she's drawn to come to this Jesus, the son of David, to find healing for her daughter. And notice what she says. She comes and she says, have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Notice how she doesn't just say, have pity on my daughter. But she says, have pity on me, which any parent knows that bond, especially moms, that umbilical cord that you gave nutrients to physically to your child in the womb, that doesn't really go away. And when your child is hurting and suffering, your heart's ripped open just as much. This is a woman, this is a mom who's hurting with her child. She's truly living compassion, which means to suffer with another. And she's coming to the Lord, saying, have pity on me, have mercy on me. But notice this first part. Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Think about that trial of faith right there. Maybe you've experienced this. When your heart is broken open for someone that you love that's hurting, and you're crying out from the depth of your heart, please, Lord, help my child. Help my family member. Help my friend. Help me. And maybe you experience what seems like a, ring, a ringtone on the other side. And you're just kind of like, hello, hello, um, are you listening? And you hear silence. And maybe that lie of the serpent starts to come in saying, see, what did I tell you? He's not listening. Maybe we've experienced that. And to make matters worse, the very ambassadors of Jesus, these disciples, these 12, who later will become the founding stones of the church, they aren't behaving very well in this moment. Right in front of her, they say, Lord, get this person out of here. She keeps calling after us. She's annoying. 
And maybe you've experienced something like that too, of those who are called to be those ministers of the church, that maybe through their own brokenness and human weakness, maybe you've experienced that wall that have come up, maybe in the midst of a confession when the priest maybe yelled at you, or maybe, I know my, my sister-in-law had a priest once, we have a lot of little, I have a lot of little nephews that have lots of energy, and the priest kind of called him out, and it hurt. Unbecoming of a priest. And here we have, this is something happening, it's not anything new, it's something right in the midst of the scriptures too. Sometimes the very ministers of the church can sometimes in their witness get in the way of that powerful message of the gospel. And so she's experiencing both silence and bad witness from the disciples. But then Jesus goes on further saying, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's almost like a knife wound that just keeps like turning in there. And what he's saying there is, I'm the Messiah come to rebuild Israel. And so I've come to these sheep right here. And Canaanite woman, you, you are outside of that covenant right now. And so I'm here to build Israel up. But the woman doesn't give up. I mean, just think about it. If you went through all of that process, would you just sort of throw in the towel and be like, that's enough. I'm going somewhere else. But she doesn't. She gets on her knees and she says, Lord, help me. Again, it's that mom heart that's just totally open. Help me. And then he says these words. It's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. I mean, this is, this is, this is something that's really intense. Again, he's affirming that sense of, I'm here to build this family of Israel up again. And you are outside of that covenant right now. And so I need to give the food to the children. And in many ways, he's speaking this powerful truth that he is here to rebuild Israel, but those who are hearing at the time are thinking in a way that they've forgotten what was also said in the Old Testament, which Jesus remembers. This is the powerful thing here. At this particular time in history, Israel was starting to become more and more exclusive in their understanding of what the chosen people meant. All the nations, yes, will come, but they'll be second-class citizens. And yet, this is not what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, I am going to give the food to the children. And ultimately, he knows that he's drawing this faith out of this woman so that she might be brought deep into this family of God. Because this is what she says in the midst of all of this. She says, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. She is coming in a way totally different than any Pharisee came before. The Pharisees we heard about actually right before we heard this gospel passage. They come and they're described as those that consider themselves already righteous and have no need of help. And yet, here's this woman coming, not in pride, not in self-sufficiency, but is coming in the depth of humility, saying, Lord, you're right. I don't deserve any of this. But I know, Lord, that even one little crumb 
that falls from that table is a banquet for me because of who you are. And that kind of faith pierces this dam of mercy, this water of mercy that has been waiting and waiting and waiting. And I can just see the Lord, even behind what seems to be these contradictory things, he is there with a heart so full of love saying, I see you, woman. I know who you are. I know that you have the strength to make this courageous act of faith and you can puncture my very heart and capture it. And then he says these words, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. In other words, woman, you've captured my heart. You've gone through the silence. You've gone through the brokenness of my own ministers. You have gone through even recognizing that you don't deserve any of this. It's not owed to you. You're not entitled to any of it. And yet you come saying, my hands are open. And I trust that you ultimately are the father that knows how to give even the crumbs to me. And by becoming so little, it's like the Lord comes in with his hands and scoops her up like an elevator to bring her to those heights of sanctity. And she becomes one of the first of those outside of the covenant, outside of the family of God, that the first reading prophesied about, my house will be a house for all people. That temple, which Jesus will say, this is my body, and he will found that temple on the rock of Peter, forming the church, saying, this is the new Israel. And guess what? It's actually reaching out to the whole nations to bring them in to be one family. Not first class and not second class, but one family of brothers and sisters. This woman's faith is amazing. This is not Jesus having a bad day, but this is Jesus with the heart of a shepherd who knows each one of our hearts. Can we trust him? Even when we experience silence, even we ex when we experience brokenness from the ministers, even when we experience what seems to be a rebuke, can we still come before the Lord like this woman did, saying, Lord, I know that you see me, even if I can't always feel it. And Lord, just say the word. You don't even have to say the whole sentence, but just a crumb. And that's all that I need. And if you keep asking and asking and asking, it says in the scriptures, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So when you struggle in faith, when maybe there is someone in your life that you are praying for, that you're hurting with, and maybe it's you, but maybe you're crying out. And maybe you're in one of these places right now. Maybe you're in the silence. Maybe you've experienced hurt from church's ministers. Maybe you've experienced what seems to be rebuke. To go back to this passage and say, this woman who is outside of the family of God courageously jumped the wall and captured the heart of the Lord through her faith. And as you receive the Eucharist today, maybe say those same words, Lord, even the scrap that falls from the table, that's all that I need. Lord, help me.